Hi Space Cats, welcome back to my channel. This week I want to talk about something a little bit more theoretical, gravity theories. There is so much to get through, so let's start. So in school, you might have been taught about Sir Isaac Newton, how he sat below a tree when an apple fell on his head. It was in this moment that he came up with the theory of gravity. The gravitational force between two masses, m1 and m2, are their product times a gravitational constant and divided by the square distance between the masses. In other words, gravity is a force that acts between objects with mass. Whilst his theory works great on the very local scales here on Earth, it turns out that it wasn't so great when you get to larger scales, like for bodies in our solar system. Later, in 1915, Albert Einstein proposed the general theory of relativity, and that is now our most accurate description of gravity. In this theory, gravity is not seen as a force, but as a natural consequence of the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. Mass on the fabric of space-time curves that space-time, such that light travelling on the curvature will travel a further distance than if there were no curvature. This is exactly gravitational lensing, and is one of the many things that general relativity has correctly predicted. However, there is one big problem with Einstein's theory of relativity, and that is that it works on the very large scales, on the sizes of planets, galaxies, and clusters, but it's incompatible with the smaller scales, quantum scales, in the realm of atomic and subatomic particles. Gravity is one of the four fundamental interactions in the universe, alongside electromagnetism and the strong and weak forces. A complete theory of gravity should be compatible with the other three phenomena, and should work on all scales. Shortly after Einstein published his theory of general relativity, in 1918, Hermann Weyl proposed a unified theory of gravity and electromagnetism. This was before the strong and weak forces were discovered. Whale's gravity showed that electromagnetism, like gravity, was also a natural consequence of geometry of space-time. Whale's theory is fully consistent with Maxwell's equations, which are the foundations of electromagnetism. And unlike GR, Whale's theory is locally scale invariant. It works on all scales. And whilst GR is full of singularities, like at the centre of black holes, where all physics breaks down, Whale's theory is singularity-free. But despite its elegance and beauty, Einstein objected to the theory. Whale's theory introduced gauge transformations, changes in scale of space-time. And this consequently led to three main problems. Firstly, the hydrogen problem. Unless the Whale field is constant, two hydrogen atoms moving along different paths in space-time would end up with different sizes, and therefore should radiate at different frequencies. This has not been observed. All hydrogen atoms are the same size. Number two is the second clock effect. Similarly, if you had two identical clocks traversing different paths, in GR, when they're brought back together, the clock's times would be asynchronous. But in Whale's theory, the clocks would not only tick at different rates depending on the paths they take, but the new ticking rate would persist even after the clocks are reunited. Again, this is not observed. Number three is fourth order field equations that can lead to instabilities. This is a little too theoretical to go into, but in short, we could end up with explosive vacuum densities and evaporation of all of space. paper, much research has been built upon the original theory, and many solutions have been made to make these problems go away. 
More importantly, the gauge concept has been carried over to quantum mechanics where it has made huge contributions and progress to the field. Well's theory is largely seen as incomplete, but there are people still actively working on it or variations of it. This may be our solution to the grand unified theory of everything. I hope you all found that interesting. Let me know in the comments section below if you think that Wells theory stands a chance against GR. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and as usual, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. I am super excited to announce the launch of Spacemog merchandise which can be found on my website and the link below. Be sure to check it out if you want to support me and to help me continue making videos.